Have you ever thought to yourself, what's the difference between all of these artist erasers? Well, today I am going to find out. I'm sure this is only a small portion of the art erasers out there, but I was very curious to see the difference between each of these and maybe find my new favorite eraser. This is the chart we are going to use to test the erasers on different materials. We've got a light pencil test, dark pencil test, heavy pencil test, Copic markers, Sakura Micron pins, we've got Spectra alcohol markers, we've got Prisma colored pencils, and some watercolor just to see what the eraser does to these materials. And I am very excited, so let's just get into it. We are going to start off with this Dixon eraser of the pink pearl variety, it was 80 cents. Let's just see what happens. Uh, okay, okay, it's an eraser. It's struggling a bit on the heavy pencil test, but who isn't? Let's see what it does to the inks. The most important part about the ink test is I just wanna make sure that the ink doesn't go away because when I do my line art, I have pencil under it and I wanna make sure that my line art doesn't disappear when I erase the pencil. So that's my, that's the most important thing here for me is that I wanna see which erasers don't get rid of the ink and it looks like it's doing pretty good. And it looks like it's making the watercolor fade just a little bit. The point of the watercolor is I don't want it to fade. I just want to see if the eraser destroys the watercolor or not. All right, moving on to the Papermate Pink Pearl. It's $1.15. It's quite softer than the Dixon Pink Pearl. So let's see what happens. Ooh, yeah, it's a lot firmer and I like the way it feels a lot better compared to the Dixon. I just feel like I have more control with it. The Dixon was very flimsy. Ooh, it kind of did some damage to the ink. Between the Dixon and Papermate, the performance was the same. I guess it just depends if you want a firmer eraser. Next is this Moo Professional Eraser, which I couldn't find a price online, but it's $1.85 at my local art store. All I could find is a single eraser for $40 on Amazon, so I don't know what that was about. Ooh, I love the way this one feels. It's firm, but it feels like, ooh, it definitely erased the pencil better than the pink pearls. Not doing too much damage to the ink. It did a little bit better on the heavy pencil test compared to the pink pearls, so maybe it might be worth it. Moving on to this Stadler eraser. I don't know what it's called, but it looks like a big hunk of cheese. At $1.40, ho, oh, it's so smooth. I actually really, really like the way this eraser feels. I'm actually quite surprised. It's just so smooth. It's like butter. Maybe it's a block of butter, not a block of cheese. And the watercolor. Look how much eraser dust though this left. That was quite an eraser dust. All right, so I do really like the way this feels to be completely honest. Also, now that I've realized just how much eraser dust I'm going to be accumulating, I've got my nifty little duster. Next is this Stadler Mars Plastic Eraser, which I used to use a lot until I found out about needed erasers. At $1.70, let's see how it is. Feels pretty standard. I kind of like how firm it is, but it's not smooth like butter. I was so surprised by that. Looks to be pretty basic. Uh, it did pretty well. Actually, I think it did the best on the heavy pencil so far. Next up is Factus Grande Plastic Eraser. This is a big boy. At $4.60, let's see if we are paying for the weight of the eraser or the performance. Holding it feels good though, that's for sure. Nice big eraser. All right, well, it's doing all right. I'm quite impressed so far. Didn't do too much damage to the ink. Overall, it feels pretty basic, I have to admit. Next up is this Factus Technic eraser. It's got this weirdly clear look to it. And at $1.80, let's see how it performs. It seems to streak the pencil before it actually gets rid of it, but it does a good job of it. Ooh, it did so well on the heavy pencil test, so I'm quite impressed. Next up, we have Effectus Softer, which it is very soft. It's a lot easier to move, and at $1.60, well, let's see how it performs. Ooh, it's like erasing with a stick of butter. Oh, I actually quite like how that feels. And pretty basic on the watercolor. I like the way it felt, though. Factus Extra Soft. I like how these erasers go from plastic, softer, and extra soft. And yeah, it's pretty soft. But at $1.90, let's see how it performs. Ooh, ooh, wait a second. I think I really like this eraser. It is pretty soft. I think something I've learned is that I really like soft erasers. 
Something I am noticing is that this Factus brand is doing the best. As you can see, it goes from a darker pencil to even less pencil showing. Next up, we have this Tombow Mono Plastic Eraser in black, and it is even softer than the previous erasers. At $2 though, how will it do? It just seems like they get better and better. It's soft feeling, I love that. Though it looks like it's getting rid of more ink than the previous ones, so I'm not sure how I feel about that. Uh, that's a pretty good performance eraser. I think that might be my favorite so far. We have Tombow again with a mono light. Light touch plastic eraser. <gasps> okay, I'm actually pretty surprised with how you barely have to put the eraser on the paper and it got rid of that. But I do feel like I have to press hard to get rid of even more. Doesn't seem like it did quite as well as the other ones. It seems to be up here with the Factus Grande plastic eraser, but it's still pretty good. I have to say, I'm really impressed with how lightly you have to press down. So maybe if you have a more sensitive paper that wouldn't be good to press down really hard on, that would be a good eraser for you. In the last of our block erasers is the Sakura Sumo Grip in black. All right, it's very smooth, did a good job. Oh look, the strand is just one strand piece. That's always good. I think overall amongst all of the block erasers, this Mono Tombow plastic eraser in black was actually my favorite. It did the best as far as erasing the heavy pencil went, so that was really good. However, I think it did a little damage to the ink, which I'm not really into. I think overall these softer and extra soft Factus did the least damage to the ink, which is something I'm always looking for. So those are probably going to be pretty high on my list. Next up, we are going to be trying these mechanical erasers or stick erasers. First up is this Stadler push button advance at 358. Let's see how it goes. Ooh, nice and firm. It's doing pretty dang well, I have to say. It's not doing a lot of damage to the ink, and I do like how the eraser dust is kind of just one piece. That's pretty cool. I think that was a pretty good start to our mechanical erasers. Let's see what the rest can do. Next up is another Stadler. It is the Mars Plastic at 390, which is more expensive than the previous one. Let's see how it does. Oh, it's very firm, very solid. I don't think I like the way it feels, or it sounds. And the performance is pretty whatever. It's getting rid of some ink. It also got rid of watercolor. Not that I would use an eraser on my watercolor that hard, but it is just something that I do want to keep in mind. I'm not sure how I feel about these stick erasers. They kind of feel like something I would use in school. That said, let's move on to our most expensive eraser out of the batch, the Factus BM2 at 970. Let's see how it goes. It's got a much smaller eraser than the previous two. Good for those little details. Wow, it was the most expensive, but it isn't doing that well, to be honest. I don't know, I don't think I really like this eraser. It didn't do that well. It, it was probably the second or third worst eraser so far, but I'm sure it would be pretty good for small details. Next up is an eraser I've actually had for a few years now. It is the Tombow Mono Zero Eraser. I got it for really small details. I don't remember how much I bought it for, but I looked it up and it was 3.83. Honestly, not great. We're not doing great, y'all. I don't know, it really didn't do that great, though I really like how small it is, so I'm probably going to keep using it because of that. And the last mechanical eraser we have is this Sumo Grip Eraser by Sakura. As the second most expensive mechanical eraser, let's see how it performs at $7.71. Ooh, I think this is the best mechanical eraser we have. It's also the biggest mechanical eraser we have. It is a square shaped, it's very broad. You can get small details if you use the corner of it, but overall, if you want a smaller eraser, I think you're just gonna have to buy one. That said, I think this is the best performing mechanical pencil we have, though it did do some damage to the watercolor, though that's probably not really a concern I have. I think overall, mechanical erasers are good for smaller details if that's what you're looking for, but I don't think I would ever make a mechanical eraser my primary eraser. Okay, let's get into the kneaded erasers. General's Jumbo, kneaded eraser at $2.80. This kneaded eraser is very soft, which I absolutely love kneaded erasers. Some of these are very firm, 
and it seems to be erasing quite well. The reason why I've made needed eraser is my main eraser is because I do like to dab away the pencil so that I don't rub away the ink, but it seems like this needed eraser does no damage to the ink, so that's really good. Of course, it doesn't do very well with the colored pencil, and you can see it picking up all this blue, so that'll be pretty cool to have this blue needed eraser. Overall, not a bad eraser. I just love how soft it is, though, to be honest. Our next eraser is the Stadler Art Eraser at $1.90. It is very, very soft as well. And the heavy pencil seems to be doing pretty well. And I do think all of these needed erasers are going to struggle a bit on the colored pencil just because you do have to be really rough on the colored pencil. And because they're so malleable, I think it's just a lot harder to do that. All right, not a bad needed eraser. Again, love how soft it is. Next up is the Prismacolor Kneaded Rubber, which is so hard. It is very, very firm and just really difficult to knead. But let's see how it fares at $1.70. Doesn't seem to be doing well, to be honest. It's even wearing the ink away just a little. Overall, it's a pretty meh kneaded eraser. I think it might be the worst eraser so far. Next up is Mylan, which I had such a difficult time kneading. It's called a kneadable eraser, but I am convinced otherwise. At 99 cents, let's see how it does. It's erasing okay. I can't even stretch it. It's just, it's stuck in this block form. It's so weird. Overall, the worst kneadable eraser I've ever used. As far as being an eraser goes, it was okay, I guess. Our next kneaded eraser is by Blum. It is soft yet still rubbery. At 75 cents, our cheapest kneaded eraser. Let's see how it does. As far as kneaded erasers goes, I think it might be in third place. Not the best, but not the worst. It's just, it's an average eraser. So I'm not sure that I would recommend kneaded erasers to be your primary eraser, but overall not horrible. I do think they are much better than the mechanical erasers, that's for sure. Our next set of erasers is going to be in these sort of miscellaneous or just weirdly shaped erasers. So let's start off with this General's Tri-Tip Eraser. It is, it's very soft to the touch. I want to put it on my face and it's 240. So let's see how it performs. I don't know why you would want a triangle eraser. I think it might just be to grip and hold on to better. I probably should have researched that first, but it seems to be doing pretty well. I think the ink has faded just a little bit, but wow, it really passed the heavy pencil marks pretty well, I have to say. Next up is Factus Egg Gum. It's got this oval shape and it's 240. Again, very soft, just like that tri-tip eraser. So I have to wonder if these odd shapes have anything to do with how soft they are and why. It is kind of awkward to hold, I gotta say. It's doing some damage to the watercolor, which I feel like I haven't seen in a while. But as far as the quality of the heavy pencil test, it did really well. I'm actually quite impressed with it. Next up is this Faber-Castell mini sleeve eraser at 360. I'm not entirely sure what the sleeve is for. I would assume protection from getting dirty. I think that's what most of the paper sleeves are for, but for some reason we have a plastic sleeve. So let's see what we got. Oh, it's very firm. It's really weird. It's, it starts off thin and then it gets thicker. So I wonder what you would do with that. So overall, I'm not sure if the shape really appeals to me. I'm not sure what the point is, but it's a decent eraser. Next up is this Faber-Castell Perfection Eraser Pencil that I got in a scrawler box recently. I've never seen an eraser like this, so I thought it would be really interesting to include into this test. I looked up the price. It was about 331. That sound is very much like nails on a chalkboard for me, so I'm not enjoying that. I'm getting shivers down my spine. I would assume this eraser is best for small details, but honestly, it doesn't seem to be doing <laughs> that well. Okay, so the pink side I think is a lot better than the white side. Overall, I don't think I like this eraser at all. I don't think I'll ever use it again. Oh my gosh! We have yet to see one do such damage to the watercolor, oh. Wow, I think it was actually the worst eraser so far and also it did so much damage to the watercolor. Our last specialty eraser is this Tombow Mono Sand Eraser, which has this really weird sand papery texture to it. So I'm really curious. $4.40, let's see how it performs. Again, another weird 
texture that is very much like nails on a chalkboard for me. It's very firm, which I'm not really that surprised by, considering it is sandpaper. Not surprisingly, it scrapes away both the line art and the Copic on here. I do think this eraser was made to get rid of the tougher sort of things that you do want to pick up. So I think it's supposed to pick up ink, not the eraser for me, but I can see where you might need an eraser that can. So the paper definitely has a bit of a rougher texture, but honestly, there's really not that much damage to it. Interesting eraser, but I don't think I'm going to need such a thing. And that is that for the miscellaneous erasers. It started off strong and then got pretty iffy. Our last category of erasers is going to be the erasers on the tips of pencils. More specifically, we are going to be using mechanical pencils. I just find that most wooden pencil erasers really aren't that great, so I thought I would just throw in some mechanical pencils that I already owned. Plus, to be honest, I just needed three more to make this 30 erasers. If you want a bonus to make this 31, here is me using a black wing pencil that has an eraser, and it seems to be pretty basic. Uh, like I said, this is why I didn't want to get too many wooden pencils because, well, honestly, the erasers just aren't great. Our first mechanical pencil eraser is this Pilot Color Eno. I bought this a few years ago on Amazon. The price right now is $2.75. I think if you were in a pickle, erasers on your mechanical pencils and just pencils in general wouldn't be so bad to have. Um, it's actually not horrible. Let's just see how it does with its own lead. It didn't do too bad on the light blue I did, but the darker blue, it definitely struggled a little bit to pick up. But like I said, I think if you're in a bind, it wouldn't be so bad. Next up is the pencil I use all the time while I draw. It is a Sakura 127 mechanical pencil. I think this pencil cost $8. It came in a pack of pins for me. So let's just see how it is. It's a lot smoother and better feeling than the Pilot one. Overall, I definitely think it has a better feel than the Pilot pencil. That actually wasn't so bad. And last but not least, we have this Sumo Grip mechanical pencil with a spinning eraser, which is good because then you're not constantly making your lead come out when you're erasing. This pencil costs $4.98. Let's see how it goes. Oh wow, it's very smooth and buttery, so I really like that feel. Overall, I think that was actually the best mechanical pencil eraser. They actually might be better than the average of the mechanical erasers, but overall, if you're in a bind, I don't think they're a bad option. I think overall my favorite eraser out of the bunch is the Tombow Mono Plastic Eraser in black. Second was the Factus Softer Eraser. And third was the Factus Extra Soft Eraser. My favorite out of the mechanical erasers was the Sumo Grip Eraser. And out of the kneaded erasers, we've got the Stadler Art Eraser. Out of the miscellaneous or weird shaped erasers, I did like General's tri-tip eraser. And out of the mechanical pencils, I'm going to have to go with my Sakura mechanical pencil. I hope you guys learned a thing or two about erasers here. It was so much fun trying all of these erasers and seeing what works, see how they feel different. It was really weird. I've never tried probably 95% of these erasers. So it was definitely a lot of fun. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. And now a huge thank you to all of my wonderful patrons, including Michael Yun, Zach Abstract, Megan, Chris Side, Davey Tomato, Cool Guy Josh, Hey Lucy, Mackenzie, Maureen A, Pi, Drizzle, Cindy J, TJ Dutch, Star, Kylie Perry Buck, Lex CS, Meredith H, and Antimeral Scott. If you want a shout out at the end of my videos, sketches, coloring pages, early access, and more, check out my Patreon by clicking the link in the description. Thank you all so much for the support. Bye.